You know, there's something so very powerful. If you weren't here uh, last Sunday, I'd really encourage you to have a look at the live stream uh, because I believe this is something that the Spirit of God is really speaking to us at the moment. And we need to be discerning the times and the seasons. God's saying, ask, just ask. I want to do so much. There's so much I'm waiting to do. And what happens when we're asking is we are positioning ourselves to receive what He already really wants to give us. It's actually making room in our lives, saying, God, I come with an expectation and I, I am coming into agreement with you and I'm, I'm coming into agreement to receive from heaven what you are wanting to do. And uh, so I really, as I've been praying, I really feel that the Lord is speaking to us about prayer. And I want to share just a little bit more about that today. Hallelujah. I've been looking at, at the story of um, Abraham recently. Hallelujah. Can you pass me my water bottle, please? If you want to turn with me to Genesis chapter 18. In this chapter, we read about the Lord coming to him. The Lord comes and he comes with these angels and he tells Abraham the amazing news. Listen, you're going to have a son. And um, we'll just read briefly about that. They turn up and he, and he goes and he prepares a, a, a calf for them. He, he brings an offering and he, uh, he honors them and he listens. And then he says, um, verse 10, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I've grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being all old also? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, I shall surely bear a child since I'm shall I surely bear a child since I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Turn to your neighbour and say, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I didn't laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. And you know what? They called him Isaac, which means laughter. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on their way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. I love it. As, as they're going, Abraham just doesn't want to leave. He's like, I'll walk with you. I just want to stay with you. And you know, those that become friends of God, those that walk with the Lord, they are, they're the ones that the Lord delights to share his secrets with. So they're on their way and Abraham goes, oh, I'll just come with you for a little while. And the Lord goes, should I tell him? I want to, I want to share what I'm, I want to, should I, should I talk to Abraham? And of course, it's the heart of God. He wants to share with us what's going on in his heart. Then the Lord said, because the great outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now to see uh, whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that's come to me. And if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall you not judge all of the earth? You who shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You know, I love this. It's very interesting that in the same assignment that came to tell of the, the coming of Isaac, at the same time they came to bring judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. But you know, Isaac's a type of Christ. When Christ comes in, sin goes out. Hallelujah. Everything in the Old Testament is speaking to us in types and shadows. It's a, it's a, a prophecy about, about what is coming. When the Christ comes in, our sin nature goes out and it cannot stay. 
Hallelujah. But Abraham comes and he begins to tug on the mercy, mercy strings of God's heart. He didn't change God's mind. I used to think, wow, Abraham changed God's mind. What he did was simply begin to say, I know who you are. I know who you are. And God was giving him a divine invitation. You see, the scriptures tell us that the mercy of God is higher than the heavens. And he's waiting for you on the earth to simply come and say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's looking for an intercessor. Hallelujah. He's looking for someone to say, yes, God, I know what your mercy is. I know what your will is. I know your character. I know you want to heal people. And as you come and you say, I'm on the earth, I know, I know God, who you are. You begin to intercede. You begin to come into agreement with God, what God already wants to do. He says here, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? He's telling God who he is. You know, it's a good thing for us in prayer to remind God who he is. You are faithful and true. I think about it written on his thigh, faithful and true. It says that in the, in the book of Revelation. He's got it emblazoned on him. He is faithful and true. He is faithful and true. Whatever God has promised to you, you need to remind him, God, I know who you are. You are faithful and true. In doing this, we are not twisting the arm of God. We are simply aligning ourselves with his will. He wants to demonstrate himself as faithful, true, and just. Hallelujah. And whatever he has promised you, he is faithful to do it. He is waiting for you now to come into agreement and, and come into intercession that says, yes, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He didn't ask us to pray this because he thought it was a, just a nice idea. He was telling you, you have been given power to come and release the glory of God on the earth. He says, I don't want to do this without you. The will of God is to release mercy and to show mercy. Hallelujah. God is waiting for you to declare, I know who you are. I know what your will is. And as you decree the will of God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. You can begin to see the invasion of God come. I remember going into a meeting when I first started out preaching. I was in uh, New Jersey. And we, I just started to see some healings happen, some miracles happen. And it was so exciting. Uh, in every meeting, I was seeing miracles and healings. And I was doing my William Branham. And uh, before the meeting, I was asking the Lord, what do you want to do in the meeting? And he began to speak about some prophetic things that he wanted to do. And I sort of got disappointed. I thought, God, don't you want to heal anybody? And then as I, um, as I went into the, the meeting, I was worshipping and I said, God, there must be people in here that you want to heal. And then bang, 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 I got the most uh, accurate words of knowledge I'd ever had in my life. Just bang, 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 downloaded. Astonishing healings happened that night. Um, someone had just been diagnosed with a, a spot on their liver that they'd, uh, the, the doctors had seen. I, I saw it, open vision. And... One after another, these amazing uh, words of knowledge came. And I thought to myself, that, that's very odd. I asked the Lord before the meeting and he didn't tell me he wanted to heal. But as soon as I said, there must be people here you want to heal, God. Show me who they are. Bang, 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 I got them all. And what the Lord was speaking to me was he was saying, I want you to know what it is to go to war with my will. You know, too often... We think about God and we think, well, I wonder what he wants to do. But he's made it clear in the word of God. So much of what he wants to do is here. He says, whenever you go into a city, heal the sick that are there and tell them that the kingdom of God's come upon them. So we ask, oh God, I don't know what your will is. He says, well, it's right there. Now, I'm not saying that we... I, we can't put God in a box. We can't get a formula for God. But the will of God is something that is manifested to us through hearing his voice and through reading the word of God. 
When you see what he says, you can go to war with what his will is. I know it's your will, Holy Spirit, for me to be walking in peace and joy today. You didn't have to ask, oh God, I hope that you can help me be happy. It is his will for you to be full of joy. So you can say, your will be done in my life. Lord, thank you for joy. Fill me with your joy. You said in your presence, there's fullness of joy. So I thank you for it. Whatever it is that God gives revelation about, he wants you to go to war with it in prayer. He wants you to begin to declare your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he wants you to know what his will is. He wants to heal people. That's who he is. He wants to come and manifest the life of Christ to you.